go and record. Okay, so we're on week seven. Let's check out week seven. We're supposed to be working, uh, we're supposed to start working in desktop module six. And that's the main uh, main homework to be working on this week, plus the labs we'll be doing in class. Let's look forward to week eight. So this is around, around midterm week. We got uh, test out chapter six here. And it's going to be due on the 16th. So we've got some time. We've got some time for module six. Okay, I think we've got some presentations that may not have ever been done yet. Let me go look at the grade book without. Y'all seeing the grade book. I think Paul has a presentation not done yet. I believe it's this class. Uh, it was sent in. Yeah, but you got to actually do the presentation. I did an MP4. I see of it. Yep. Do you actually have the PowerPoint where you could do the presentation live? Um, I can check. Okay. Last week we were playing, and also like the Friday before, we were playing with vulnerability scanners and just looking at one particular vulnerability scanner, OpenBaz. Uh, on offshoot of, of Nessus. We installed that into our Kali Linux. And we did some scans against our Linux machines and figured out some security vulnerability issues. We went in and applied patches to the system, if you remember. We applied patches to some of the systems anyway. And we kind of had some mixed results. The two scans from a patch system versus an unpatched system gave us the same result, 4.9 vulnerability. But we went in and, and verified the 4.9 and 4.7 severity level and verified that the mitigation, meaning security patches were in place because I remoted in and checked for the to uh, kernel mitigation files to denote that the Linux kernel was free or known about the exploits and was actively um, preventing them. Those files were in place, but the Greenbone security system here on an open BAS in the background is still detecting them as a vulnerability. So that showed that we had a false positive meaning it was still detecting vulnerabilities that no longer existed. And that's a good thing. You've got these scanners that they are not perfect. They will miss stuff. And they will also detect things that are not vulnerable. So I was hoping to see a downward trend on that, but we did not. Now we do have a 1010. 110 here that was against a Windows machine. Now this being updated, Windows updates and patches. And I don't know if there's anything that we can do on the Windows machine to get the score any lower. We may be at our the best baseline that we can get. So this 5.0 here, things are being reported out, but it is a domain controller, so it does need to be open for clients to enumerate against it. I 
mitigation is simply filter, meaning set a firewall on that port to protect it. And that is in place, that mitigation is in place. We do have firewall set for the people at the internet we cannot directly scan. So that might be something to record as this one is okay or already mitigated. All right, Paul, you found your PowerPoint yet? I, the only thing that I've got from that is what was submitted. That was on my C drive. Uh, well, let me see if I'll go ahead and maybe play it then. Resume recording here. So I want to show you some uh, just some general stuff today. Uh, anybody check on a bleeping computer? Probably not. Has anybody looked at this web website since I showed it in like the first week or two of class? Not today, but I did check it over the weekend just briefly. So a couple of interesting articles. I haven't looked a whole lot, just some things that caught my eye real quick. Microsoft's providing Defender updates for Windows install images. That means like the VHD files that we mounted via PowerShell and uh, did Windows updates for. And they now allow you to install Windows Defender update images in a similar fashion. That way, when you start the machine up, uh, the patches can be in there, or if you're modifying the installer, you can push the latest Defender uh, definitions into it. So when Windows is installed, there's not a, um, a time gap from when the computer's installed to when the patches can be downloaded off the internet. So they've developed a PowerShell script and they allow you to download the uh, latest cab files for Defender and just simply run the PowerShell script and update and remove the packages. I'm going to assume working directory would actually mean whether that you have the image file or the Windows installer file stored and you would replace that. You might have to take a little bit of practice if you needed to implement that to test out those command lines. Something else I was looking at, Microsoft uh, puts out a fix for internet connection issues. So there was a problem with Windows 10, the latest feature update, where you'd be connected to the internet and Windows would report no internet access. And most things, it didn't do much. You could go ahead and run the internet, but there's a few programs that relied on the Windows API to let them know if they're on the internet or not. And if it said no internet connection, they wouldn't even attempt to try and fail. So that was interesting. Let's see, so is Joshua Main still on here? Or is he in my next class? Was he even on here? I'm trying to think. So as we look at my roster here, or is anybody, is he afternoon class or? I think he's afternoon class. Yep, apparently so. I was kind of looking that up for him. He had some weird issues that almost sounded like this might have been the problem. But this is an optional update. So if anybody is running the very latest version of 
Windows 10, you might need this knowledge base to fix some weird internet inconsistencies if you're having any. Although most likely it's probably your ISP causing you issues versus this. Yeah, I'm done trying to fix Windows 10 issues for a while. <laughs> you know you want to install an optional update. If you have an HP device manager, there's a backdoor that lets the attackers take over your whole entire Windows system, it appears. So that's nice. Anybody running HP machines? A laptop's at HP. Well, that might be concerning to you. Yep. So, uh, hey, Riley, what's your IP address? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, call sudden link. All right, so there's a New Jersey hospital paid $670,000 to prevent data leakage. Well, wow. hackers, hackers got a payday, didn't they? That figure happens a lot. I mean, not that exact $670,000, but um, six figures, seven figures. That's why the, the security is so big. There's a lot of money for the bad guys. They get rich. Don't be a bad guy. They also get jail time. So is that a, an incident where they already gathered the information and they were paid not to release it or yeah. they paid them to patch up a hole? No, they paid them not to release information. I'm in the wrong career field. And, it's only a matter of time till they get caught. Yeah, how, how is there a guarantee that they're not going to release the information anyway? I mean, you're throwing $670,000, not let info get out on the dark web, but, you know, in a year or two, are they going to put it on the dark web and sell it anyway and make even more money when they run out of their $670,000 and buy nice cars and, and junk? Lots of sites infiltrated with credit card skimmers built into e-commerce sites. The top 100, the top 10,000 Alexa sites. And many of them are affected with the skimmer software. Does anybody use Alexa? No. No way. I'm in the security world, so I don't have any smart speaker. And everybody looks at me like, hey, you're big IT. Why don't you have one of these? And I'm like, no. Uh -oh. I want to be listened to. It's like my phone listens to me enough. I, I can't like get over how blatant TikTok is about it. Uh, yesterday, I, I was in a living room and my wife's got TikTok. We put on some movie and she just mentioned, um, like, she's the man. And like 10 minutes later, start scrolling through TikTok and quotes from she's the man and videos like that just start pulling up. Yeah. It's um, supposedly it's, it's just an algorithm and it's supposed to like think what you're doing and it's not actually reading your, what you're, saying right at this second but it's just too many coincidences like that you need to watch the uh, the social dilemma on netflix yeah yeah that's a good one to watch um 
and a neighbor was using Pinzol and was talking about Pinzol and I'd never used it before. And I go to a computer and that's all the ads that, that, that are there on Facebook and everywhere is Pinzol. Like I've never searched this. So weird stuff. Although I have switched over to Pinzol. Few months later. So yeah, that's a pretty cool site. NVIDIA's got a, a uh, security flaw on their video drivers. You may got NVIDIA cards. Are y'all using Radeon or built-in graphics? Radeon. Of course, it doesn't really matter. Radeon and some others, I mean, everybody's got security vulnerabilities. That's why this site is is neat to keep uh, a checkup on. Yeah, I I just realized that I actually have an HP. Can can we like use that exploit just to see how it works? Well, sure. If it's against your own system, if there's actually a enough documentation, I mean, there may not be. These hackers provide information to the vendor and then they provide security flaws, but they don't necessarily release the back door to the general public. Well, they got a weak cipher, remote method invocation, and an escalation of privileges. And this affects all versions of HP Device Manager. It almost has a 10.0 score. A 9.9 .9 is pretty high. And there is no, there is no patch. Yeah, we can just partially mitigate the risks. Yep. And talk about remediation. And there is the mitigate right there. Remember I talked about that on Wednesday last week some of the key terms, I think. No, I think that was Friday. Wednesday, we talked about the CIA triad and non-repudiation and stuff like that. And mitigate is one of those, another keyword that I said is really big. And it's right there in print in front of you. So remediation, that's what steps you would take to, to mitigate. <laughs> I guess you would say. Is partially mitigate like an axiomoron or something? Because mitigate means to you know, lessen the security risk. It doesn't mean to ever get anything 100%. So what is partially lessen the security risk versus lessen the security risk? Isn't that isn't that saying about the same thing? Or am I grammatically thinking wrong? If mitigate is 75%, then partially it would be 25%. I guess so. Is it actually statistically? I've never seen 75%. Make less severe, serious, or painful. I mean, that's, that's the definition of it. There's not a percentage. I'm going to mitigate your pain. I'm going to partially mitigate your pain. Both of them says you're going to make their pain a little bit less, but giving no 
no exact definition of how much less your pain is going to be. Putting in firewall rules. Changing Postgres. Yeah, that's pretty good mitigation, I guess. Okay, let's look back at um, look back at Cali again. Everybody's remote today. The remoting in is slow. I was thinking about adding in um, bad store. I think I'll wait until Wednesday and Friday for us to set up and implement bad store. And maybe do a scan against it. I don't know. Bad store is not not too huge, but um, it should have a severity of ten. And then we want to go ahead and try to hack the machine too after we run a, a security scan against it. Who's remoted into the machines? Anybody? I am. I am. Okay. I think what I want to do is maybe get bad store ready. And then this actually do scanning and and messing with bad store on Wednesday and, and Friday and maybe into next week. But just getting bad store ready and then giving all what time would be left in class to work on um, some of the test out is probably a good bet for right now. And make sure I'm still recording. Yep, still recording. You probably have bad store on your system already. It should be in everybody's ISOs folder on their C drive. Well, we don't need to really, I guess, glance and look. We'll, we'll create the virtual machine first. So you just simply need to have the Hyper-V manager window up on your screen. And bad store is a live Linux CD that is a badly configured e-commerce site that purposely has all of the bad coding techniques and stuff implemented and security flaws implemented in it so that you can see what people have run into over the, the decades of security. Yeah, James, you got, you still with us, James? James must have ran, ran to get a snack. Okay, we're going to create a new virtual machine. And I'll try to go slow because I know your mouse clicks promoting in is pretty slow. So you get the standard before you begin wizard or um, information on the wizard. 
and we click new virtual machine. I think Aaron's still trying to get it clicked. I'm going to go next on the before you begin. And we've got a name and location. We'll name this AM Bad Store. I guess we should name it AM Security Bad Store. Okay, I'm going to go next. It is going to be a generation one. I believe it is all 32 bit guest OS. So that means we will have to pick generation one. So next is asking for the startup memory. It's so old, I'm not gonna use dynamic memory for this one. And I believe I'm gonna do Use 2048. I believe that is way more than we need. I don't know. I'm using quite a bit of RAM already in my system. I think I think we should leave it at 1024 because I've also got to create one in the afternoon class. So that would be four gig of RAM. That would put me past what I'm currently using. So I'll leave it at 1024. It should be enough. So I'll go next. The network will connect it to a bridged adapter. We'll go next. We will attach a virtual hard disk later because this is a live CD. We're not actually going to attach a virtual hard disk later. We're just not going to have a virtual hard disk. It does not install, only runs off of a CD-ROM. So that would be the last radio button, attach a virtual hard disk later. And then you just next and finish it out. Why is your saying install an operating system? Go back to the previous one there, Paul. Yeah, click that attach the last radio button. There you go. Now you hit next. And finish.
Yeah, you put too much RAM on it, James. Want me to edit yours and? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 1,024 is what we want to leave it at. You'll oh, okay. Exhaust, you'll exhaust cool. all the RAM of your of our host system. Okay, so we're going to. Well, you'll do the same thing too, and you can edit the RAM. But we're going to right-click the virtual machine that we just created, the Embad Store, and we're going to go to Settings. Since this is nice. such an such an old old system, we've got to add some legacy uh, things into here and change some stuff up. It's even older than Generation One's defaults. So yeah, make sure your RAM is 1024 in your settings. You should be able to see and click on that. But dynamic is not checked. So dynamic should be unchecked and you should be at 1024. Um, and the rest of us, really this adapter here, your network adapter needs to be removed. When you find your network adapter and it's bridged, and you simply click remove. And you can go and apply that to remove it out of the system. We need to add hardware now. And that would be the top of your list. It says add hardware. And there's network adapter, and then there's legacy network adapter. We need to click on legacy network adapter. And choose a legacy network adapter to form a network-based installation of the guest operating system, blah, whatever. But click add. Legacy network adapter. I don't Let's see. Let me review your screen. You must have selected generation two. So oh, yeah. One. Yeah, you'll have to delete your virtual machine and recreate it. Okay. It's got to be a generation one, no hard disk, 1024 mega RAM. Yeah, generation two does not have legacy adapters. So when you add your legacy adapter in, you're going to have to change it to bridge network for the connection type. And then you can apply that. What was the name called again of the virtual machine? So it's still on my screen here in my title bar. It's the AM security bad store. Okay. It's just hard to see because I have two windows open. Yeah. Yeah. AM security bad store. And yeah, generation one, leave the memory as it is. And don't use dynamic memory. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Don't use dynamic memory. That it doesn't really matter because you're going to delete that card anyway. So just go next. Click that last radio button down there and then click finish. Yeah, finish. Either way, next finish or finish. Now you can go back and edit. And settings, yeah. And then you can click the network adapter and remove it. And then apply that. And then, uh, and then when you add hardware, you should have like a C. Yep. And edit. Add it and then the drop down, change it to bridge and click apply. All right. Okay, now we need to get this ready. Uh, click on our DVD drive. Does everybody have a DVD drive under their IDE controller?
and allows you to click on image file, the little radio button, and then the browse button will become accessible to you. When you browse, you'll likely find your bad store.iso. Add store underscore 212.iso. Does everybody have one? I would think everybody would have one. I'm not seeing that. Go to C drive. In your ISO folder. You'll have to left click on the letters ISO to see it. Not right click, left click. There you go. There you got your file, the two toy, the newer version. So that's the one we want. Let's go and hit OK. Okay, if you want to go and power it on, you can connect to it and power it on. So we'll just connect it to our bridged adapter. And this is such legacy. I'll put it in chat, but everybody should know IF config. Somebody just do some magic? Yeah, that was Paul. I muted him. <laughs> he created another Star Wars movie. movie. Huh. It's called the Star Wars Christmas Special. Wasn't that like the worst thing ever, according to Mark Hamill? 
Yes. I like everything Star Wars, absolutely everything. And it's like, there's no way that I won't like this. I didn't like it. It was bad. It was real bad. What was it? It's like the Christmas Star Wars special from 1979 or something like that. You can look it up on YouTube. Never heard of it. If you want to, if you want to cry, if, if you thought, if if you thought any of the um, the stuff out of episodes uh, four, five, and six were bad, just watch that one, and then you'll think the entire franchise is amazing and great. I like all I like all of them. But. Remember the adventures of the Ewoks. As much as I like Star Wars, I do have to say Blue Harvest wasn't bad. Oh, I love Blue Harvest. I don't know. I've seen that. Okay, so we're still recording. If y'all got it up, if you typed an IF config, do you have an IP address? Yep. Yes. Okay, and that was a big key, trying to get that network adapter to, to work. So that sets us up and uh, we can type in, um, actually we can just hit the power off button because it's just a live CD. So that's the black square white circle button in the title bar and that just turns it off. There's no worry about safely shutting down the system or anything. And because it is a live CD, so everything's read only. And that will get us uh, prepped and ready Wednesday. We'll start it up and we'll run a a scan against it with our green bone uh, security analyzer. I think we'll scan it and without providing credentials. I don't know that there's any credentials to it in the first place, but we run that scan and see what it finds. And then we'll start um, pecking away at it. And there's a lot of different stuff. It's got database server on it. It's got web interface on it. It's got uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities uh, that are open in it. It has uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities that are open in it. So lots of uh, cool stuff to do. And we'll play with Bad Store for a little bit and then maybe give you all time just to hack Bad Store by itself, too. It sounds fun. So we're up here, we're past break time. What I'm going to let you do for the rest of the class period is, is go ahead and log into test out and work on test out for the rest of the class. And I'm going to try to get with support or go check to see if they reactivated um, my account because it expired October 1st. So I need to get that fixed. <laughs>